Hello everybody, welcome back to Screen Stars. Welcome to a new film series that I am doing called Dumpster Fire Movies. A little bit of fun where I essentially review films that just aren't very good really. I've had a fairly decent response to some of my uh, more polite destructions of movies. So I thought I would do this new series of film reviews and occasionally I'll put up a review for a film that is pretty abysmal in every way. Um, now, I won't generally do this with new releases. I get sent quite a lot of screeners, um, and I do review quite a lot of new releases and things like that. If that film's terrible and it kind of deserves a Dumpster Fire movie review, I won't generally do it with a new release. I'll give them a couple of years to, you know, get uh, out of the starting blocks, if you like. Um, and... Generally, you know, if you guys have got any suggestions, stick them in the comments. Uh, and if I've seen the film, or even if I haven't seen the film, I will watch it. And if it is deserving of a dumpster fire review, then we'll go ahead with it and review it. Now, these reviews are going to be slightly different because I, I will probably talk about spoilers and things like that. Because we will be going through and talking about, you know, some ridiculous plot points and ridiculous things that happen in the movie that will essentially make you, you know, face palm constantly and drop your jaw at the awesomeness of these films and how incredible they are. Now, like I've said, this is a bit of fun. This is not me intentionally poking fun at films. Well, it is a bit, but it's me essentially having a giggle along with the films because certainly this first film that I'm going to review, The Drone, is a fairly self-aware film. It's a horror comedy Um that kind of knows the whole concept is ridiculous and just runs with it and just expects you to run along with it. But it doesn't change the fact that this film, Drone, has the most bizarre concept I've ever seen uh, in my life. And it's it's directed by Jordan Rubin and it stars Alex Esso and John Brotherton. Now, this film focuses on a serial killer called The Violator, I believe he's called. He's killed about half a dozen women. He basically stalks them using the drone, films them, and then decides he's going to kill them. Now, he is. <laughs> At the beginning of this film, you see him stalking his next victim. All of a sudden, the SWAT team's at his door, knocking at his door. Um, now, I don't know about you, but generally speaking, I didn't know. SWAT teams knocked on doors. They just generally kicked them down uh, and dived in through the window. They don't generally politely knock, but this SWAT team does, which gives him the time he needs to try and escape. To be fair, it doesn't get very far, but he fires out this chant, as these serial killers always seem to know, you know, these strange chants that are going to, you know, save their spirit. And no doubt it, this works again. He is struck by lightning and the very essence of this serial killer is passed on to his beloved drone that he did all his stalking with. Case closed, surely. Um, the next scene we get is a police officer driving home with the drone in the back, bagged up for evidence, talking to what sounds like his six-year-old son or even younger, um, explaining, you know... <laughs> basically um, having a chat with his son about this serial killer, saying things like, you remember this serial killer I told you about? And then the son's explaining to the father, you mean this person that killed all these women and blah, 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 blah. And you just think, it's such a bizarre scene. And then, lo and behold, the drone awakes, the car crashes, and he is a thrust into the world to continue his killing spree. And then we shift to the two main characters here. This married couple, Rachel and Chris, moving into a new house. They're always moving into a new house. Um, unboxing everything. The uh, sleazy, pretty new neighbour comes round. Openly flirts with the husband. Totally ignores the wife. Um, and you know he's good, probably going to die fairly quickly because of this. Um... And then Chris discovers, as he's unpacking, strangely, there's this drone, this really good quality drone that doesn't have a remote control. He shows it off to his wife. She isn't interested because she's not bothered about technology. He shoots off to the local electronics store to get a remote control to take advantage of this great new drone. And then 
things escalate from there. The drone stalks them around the house, especially Rachel, because it's got a connection to her. Um, it films them having sex. It films the sleazy neighbour sunbathing, topless. It, it takes some pictures and it fires some emails to Rachel. So she thinks that her husband is stalking the neighbour and being really pervy, which she does initially. Uh, eBay, th this drone, essentially, the violator, wants rid of Chris so that it can have Rachel all to itself. So it keeps trying to set Chris up for a fall, um, kills the neighbour, uh, sends evidence to the police that makes Chris a major suspect. And then, as Chris is at the police station, she returns home, Rachel, to find flower petals and burning candles lovingly placed around the house by this drone. Yes, uh, yes, it did. It, it, it laid lots of petals, lost petals, and lit lots of candles, um, and was trying to woo Rachel. Um, and then she tries to destroy it. It all goes particularly bad. He gets out of jail. Uh, they realise that this drone is a serial psychopath, and they try and figure out how they're going to be able to stop it. Um, so, yeah, this film is definitely very self-aware of what it is. It constantly, um, you could say, lovingly plays homage to other films that have come before it. It does a, a real direct rip from the Terminator. If you know in that film Terminator where she's got the earphones on, she's pulling food out of the fridge and then, um, you know, she's got that music on. It's, it's even got the same song um, as she's listening to music. Uh, making herself a snack, um, the neighbour. Um, it's got the same music from the Terminator, and this uh, drone just flies across and kills her. So paying homage to the Terminator. It pays homage to The Shining later on in a fairly unoriginal way, and you don't need many guesses to figure out how it pays homage or basically rips off The Shining. Yes, it breaks through a door, and rather than saying here, Johnny, it says here's Ramsey, I think it is, who's the name of the killer. So, yeah, there's, there's, there's lots of homages, I suppose. You could call it ripping off other stuff as well. Um, there's, a re there's full of ridiculous and bizarre scenes. The killer drone trying to reconnect with his brother um, by basically turning up at his brother's house, dodging a few bullets, like Matrix style, and the brother um, realising it is his dead brother his dead serial killer brother because this drone plays a song saying about his saying with brother in the words and knocks over a picture of them and then the brother realizes who it is and agrees to upgrade the drone to this ultimate terminator drone it's bizarre and ridiculous it's full of other bizarre scenes where rachel's dr literally dragged across the living room by this drone by her hair um the drone is able to control cars at one point in this film, Knight Rider style. Um, it's just full of bizarreness in a wonderful way at the same time. You know, it's, it's a really bad film in a really good way. Uh, it can't be denied. You know, you just couldn't, I couldn't get it out of my head when they realised that this drone was the culprit. You know, about halfway through the film, maybe a little bit more or a bit less. Just bin it. It's a drone, for God's sake. Crush it. Bin it. Scatter its pieces all over the, you know, the district. Bury them. Throw them in the sea. Do whatever you need to do. Um, and what does he do when he actually suspects this drone might be acting up? It takes it back to the star and thinks it and tells him it's Volta. You know, uh, this is after it's been taking pictures of neighbours and pictures of them having sex and all this kind of stuff. Um, it, it, bizarre. It's full of really bizarre decisions in the film, um, but you can't help in a in a weird way but love this film because it is so shit. Um, it, it's a film to watch, and absolutely, you'll be crying laughing at some of the stuff that go in it. It's not frightening at all. Um, it's just bizarre. It's a bloody drone, for God's sake. You know what I mean? Just whack it with a baseball bat and be done with it. Um, 
I've had drones in the past, obviously not really fancy ones. I've bought drones or them little helicopter drones that you can buy and fly around. They break within the first two hours of buying them, generally speaking. Um, the flimsy rubbish. And we're supposed to believe that this drone is some kind of Terminator-esque killer. Uh, you can't get behind the concept, but you can certainly get behind the bizarre concept of this film. So... That is my first Dumpster Fire movie review, guys. I hope you liked it. If you've never seen the drone, trust me, you will enjoy it in a really weird and bizarre way. But just don't go into this film thinking it's a good film. The title of this review will kind of give it away. It's a Dumpster Fire, guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next review on Screen Stars.